we want to be our brother's keeper. There are many, many of us that are supposed to be here now, and they are yet to come. We are going to pray that every hindrance on the way, every obstacle on the way, the Lord will clear them out of the way in Jesus' name. The Lord will bring our people here safely. Can I have a greater amen? amen. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. Let's pray for our brethren. As many that are coming with the organized uh, transport system, and as many that are coming on their own, we want to pray that the Lord will bring them here safely. Every form of uh, delay on the road, we want to pray that God will clear them out of the way. Let's tell the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. You see, the Bible study is the backbone of the church. And we have come to learn at his feet. We are going to tell the Lord that the Lord will make us to be like the Berean Christians. They we are noble. They were known for their nobility. And uh, in Acts chapter 17, verse 11, the Bible said, These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word of God with all readiness of mind and search the scriptures daily, whether those things we are so. We want to pray that we will not just learn for the sake of learning, but that as we learn by the grace of God, our lives will be impacted. And the people will see the fruit of what we are learning in our life, in our day-to-day, -day, in our interpersonal relationship with other people in Jesus' name. Shall we open our mouth and pray? Let's tell the Lord that the Lord will do it for us. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And so our Heavenly Father, we ask and pray that more than what we can pray at this time, Lord, will do it for us during this Bible study in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for answer. Jesus' name we pray. Please, uh, we can have our seat. As we go into the Bible study today, we want to uh, tell us that we will not appreciate any clapping. Whether why we are welcoming the visitors or when the choir members are singing, we will not appreciate any clapping. As you do it, the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Can I have your amen? Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are grateful unto you for another day in your house to study at your feet, to learn from you, and to, you know, receive grace so that we can be who you want us to be. We ask, Lord, that as we have come this evening, your word will be powerful and bring transformation in every life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we we'll pray. Sing, amen. Rejoice, amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Let us sing. Amen. Rejoice. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Let us sing. Rejoice. Oh, yes. Glory be. In my life, God, be glorified, be glorified in my life, God, be glorified today, God, be glorified. Be glorified, oh yes. 
E God be glorified today. Lord be glorified. My heart. God be glorified. Oh yes. I have a father, almighty father. He is king of kings and lord of lords. I have a father, what about you? Oh yes. Yes, he is. I have a father. I have a father. Almighty father. He is king of kings and lord of lords. I have a father. What about you? Oh, yes. Yes, he is. I have joy like a river, joy like a river, joy like a river in my soul. Yes, I have joy like a river, joy like a river, joy like a river in my soul, in my soul. Oh, yes, joy, I have joy, yes, in my soul, oh, yes, joy, yes, joy, yes, in my soul, I have joy, oh, yes, joy. Yes, in my soul I have joy, oh yes, joy. Yes, I have joy like a river, joy like a river, joy like a river in my soul. Yes, I have joy like a river, joy like a river, joy like a river in my soul, in my soul. Yes, joy, I have joy. Yes, joy. Hold my hands, dear Lord. Hold my hands. Make me strong, Lord. Make me stand. I've come a long way, Lord. I have a long way to go. Hold my hands, dear Lord. Make me stand, make me stand. Hold my hands, Lord, yes. I've come a long way, Lord. Hold my hands, hold my hands, dear Lord. Yes, hold my hands. Yes, make me stand.
Amen. We are all welcome to the Bible study this evening in Jesus' name. Particularly, we want to welcome those who are coming into our midst for the very first time, our visitors, our converts, our invitees. Wherever you are seated in the congregation, we want to recognize you as well as bring our pastor greetings to you. So, if you are there in our midst, can you signify by raising up your hand very quickly? Wherever you are seated in the hall, can you signify by raising up your hand? Okay, you are all welcome into our midst in Jesus' name. Our general superintendent is very happy that you are in our midst tonight to study the word of God with us. And he will want me to tell you that you should keep coming with us. And uh, I believe, God, that as you keep coming, the blessings of God will be upon your life in Jesus' name. All shots are by your side. They will give you a sleep to fill. We want you to collect the sleep from them. Uh, fill the information required very legibly and uh, with capital letters. And make sure that the filled uh, uh, sleep is returned back onto them. Weekly meetings. By the grace of God, we have three important meetings in the church. We come together on Mondays like this. Mondays are like this are noted for our systematic and expository study of the word of the Lord. And it is a time we study uh, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Great has been the depth of knowledge the Lord has been granting unto us each time we come for our Monday Bible study. And uh, the unique thing is that the Monday Bible study is being handled personally by our general superintendent. Uh, on the 19th of uh, February, that is next Monday, we shall be having Old Mushi District joining our bedroom from Old Bagada, Ketu, and Shomulu for their own Bible study. Tuesday meeting. Tuesday leadership and development meeting will be coming up here tomorrow by 5.15. All our Tuesday leaders are being reminded. Supernatural night of wonders. Every first and third Thursdays of the month, we have the supernatural night of wonders with our pastor, the general superintendent, ministering unto us. We thank God for the mighty visitation of uh, the fortnight uh, program that we had. But I'm telling you, the one coming this Thursday, the Bible says the glory of the latter shall be greater than that of the former. Our service group two will be coming here to witness another time of miracle, another time of signs and wonders. We encourage that we invite people bring the lame, bring all those people that are having challenges and by the grace of God, just like in the book of Acts chapter 8 verse 8, the Bible said the whole city was full with joy and that is going to happen here again this coming Thursday in Jesus name. Because of this reason, uh, prayers and publicity for the program should be intensified and every Every, in every neighborhood, including all the people, let me show that we bring them around. On Wednesday, we are going to be rounding up our prayer and fasting with uh, a prayer meeting on group of this uh, group of district uh, basis. It's going to be by six o'clock in the evening. Sunday worship service. Next Sunday, the 18th February 2024, service group two will be coming here for their. Uh, combined worship service. The time is 7.45 a.m. in the morning. Global Crusade. The GCK, the February edition, and by the grace of God, I call the February edition a special edition. Amen? The February edition of the GCK will be coming up from the 22nd 
to the 27th uh, of uh, February, Tuesday, 27th of February, 2024. And the theme for this program is Prevailing Prayers. And I believe that if Jacob prayed and prevailed in prayer, and Jabez prayed and prevailed, you will pray. I will pray, and we will prevail in prayers in Jesus' name. Can I have a better amen? If you are expectant, another amen. Please, let's make sure that we walk all through for the publicity of the program, and we also map out strategy to conserve all the converts that the Lord will be giving to us. During this program, we are going to have the minister's conference uh, that is uh, the themed uh, staying faithful amid the end time ministry. And of course, it will also be featuring the Success Academy for all our teenagers, our campus student cup members, and the young adults. Uh, that will be coming up on the 24th of, uh, of, uh, of February 2021. Success with integrity. Please, let's make sure that we continue with the publicity. And in fact, every member of the church is expected to bring at least two invitees for this program. I believe God that as we do, the blessings of the Lord will be upon our lives in Jesus' name. We now rise up as we sing together from our gospel hymns and song. A gospel hymns and song will be taken from hymn number 246. Hymn 246. O oh, brother, life's journey beginning with courage and firmness arrive. Look well to the cause that thou art chosen. Be honest, be watchful and wise. Remember two paths are before thee, and both thy attention invite, but one leadeth on to destruction, the other to joy and delight. O oh, brother, yield not to the tempter. No matter what others may do, stay firm in the strength of the master, be loyal, be faithful and true. Each trial will make you the stronger. If you, in the name of the Lord, fight manfully under your leader, obeying the voice of his word. Oh, brother, the Savior is calling. Beware of the danger of sin. Resist not the voice of the Spirit that whispers so gently within. God calls you to enter his service, to live for him here day by day, and share by and by in the glory that never shall vanish away. God give you, God help you to follow his banner and serve him wherever you go. And when you are tempted, my brother, God give you grace to say no.
today we are going to continue with our Bible reading. But before we read, shall we just have a moment of prayer? Father, we are asking that you will open our eyes of understanding as we read your word today. We are asking that relevant passages that really speak to our present needs and problems, spiritually and physically and materially, you will impress upon our hearts. Be with us, enlighten us, instruct us, teach us as we read together now. In Jesus' name, I pray. We'll continue with the reading now. The fourth book of Moses, called Numbers. The fourth book of Moses, called Numbers. Chapter 1. Chapter 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai, in the tabernacle of the congregation, on the first day of the second month, in the second year after they were come out of the land of Egypt, saying, Take ye the sum of all the congregation of the children of Israel, after their families, by the house of their fathers, with the number of their names, every male by their poles, from twenty years old and upward, all that are able to go forth to war in Israel, thou and Aaron shall number them by their armies. And with you there shall be a man of every tribe, every one head of the house of his fathers. And these are the names of the men that shall stand with you. Of the tribe of Reuben, Eliza the son of Shediah, of Simeon, Shalumiel the son of Zurishaddai, of Judah, Nashan the son of Aminadab, of Issachar, Nethaniel the son of Zuar, of Zebulun, Eliab the son of Helan, of the children of Joseph, of Ephraim, Elishama the son of Amahad, of Manasseh, Gamaliel the son of Padazu, of Benjamin, Abidon the son of Gideoni, of Dan, Ahiza the son of Amishadai, of Asher, Pagiel the son of Akron, of Gad, Eliasif the son of Duel, of Naphtali, Ahira the son of Enan. These were the renowned of the congregation, princes of the tribes of their fathers, heads of thousands in Israel. And Moses and Aaron took these men, which are expressed by their names, and they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month, and they declared their pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, from twenty years old and upward, by their poles. As the Lord commanded Moses, so he numbered them in the wilderness of Sinai. And the children of Reuben, Israel's eldest son, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, by their poles, every male from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Reuben, were forty and six thousand and five hundred. Of the children of Simeon, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, those that were numbered of them, according to the number of the names, by their poles, every male from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Simeon, were fifty and nine thousand and three hundred. Of the children of Gad, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Gad, were forty and five thousand six hundred and fifty. Of the children of Judah, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Judah, were threescore and fourteen thousand and six hundred. Of the children of Issachar, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Issachar, were fifty and four thousand and four hundred. Of the children of Zebulun, by their generations, after their families, 
by the house of their fathers according to the number of the names from 20 years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Zebulun, were fifty and seven thousand and four hundred. Of the children of Joseph, namely of the children of Ephraim, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Ephraim, were forty thousand and five hundred. Of the children of Manasseh, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Manasseh, were thirty and two thousand and two hundred. Of the children of Benjamin, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Benjamin, were thirty and five thousand and four hundred. Of the children of Dan, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Dan, were threescore and two thousand and seven hundred. Of the children of Asher, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Asher, were forty and one thousand and five hundred. Of the children of Naphtali, throughout their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Naphtali, were fifty and three thousand and four hundred. These are those that were numbered, which Moses and Aaron numbered, and the princes of Israel, being twelve men, each one was for the house of his fathers. So were all those that were numbered of the children of Israel by the house of their fathers from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war in Israel. Even all they that were numbered were six hundred thousand and three thousand and five hundred and fifty. But the Levites after the tribe of their fathers were not numbered among them. For the Lord had spoken unto Moses, saying, only thou shalt not number the tribe of Levi, neither take the sum of them among the children of Israel. But thou shalt appoint the Levites over the tabernacle of testimony, and over all the vessels thereof, and over all things that belong to it. They shall bear the tabernacle and all the vessels thereof, and they shall minister unto it, and shall encamp round about the tabernacle. And when the tabernacle setteth forward, the Levites shall take it down, and when the tabernacle is to be pitched, the Levites shall set it up, and the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death. And the children of Israel shall pitch their tents, every man by his own camp, and every man by his own standard throughout their hosts. But the Levites shall pitch round about the tabernacle of testimony, that there be no wrath upon the congregation of the children of Israel. And the Levites shall keep the charge of the tabernacle of testimony, and the children of Israel did according to all that the Lord commanded Moses, so did they. Chapter 2 And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Every man of the children of Israel shall pitch by his own standard with the ensign of their father's house. Far off about the tabernacle of the congregation shall they pitch. And on the east side toward the rising of the sun shall they of the standard of the camp of Judah pitch throughout their armies, and Nashon, the son of Aminadab, shall be captain of the children of Judah. And his host, and those that were numbered of them, were threescore and fourteen thousand and six hundred. And those that do pitch next unto him shall be the tribe of Issachar, and Nethaniel, the son of Zuar, shall be captain of the children of Issachar, and his host, and those that were numbered thereof were fifty and four thousand and four hundred. 
then the tribe of Zebulun, and Eliab, the son of Helan, shall be captain of the children of Zebulun. And his host, and those that were numbered thereof, were fifty and seven thousand and four hundred. All that were numbered in the camp of Judah were an hundred thousand and fourscore thousand and six thousand and four hundred throughout their armies. These shall first set forth. On the south side shall be the standard of the camp of Reuben according to their armies. And the captain of the children of Reuben shall be Eliza the son of Shedir. And his host and those that were numbered thereof were forty and six thousand and five hundred. And those which pitch by him shall be the tribe of Simeon. And the captain of the children of Simeon shall be Shalumiel the son of Zurishaddai. And his host and those that were numbered of them were fifty and nine thousand and three hundred. Then the tribe of Gad, and the captain of the sons of Gad, shall be Eliaseph the son of Ruel. And his host, and those that were numbered of them, were forty and five thousand and six hundred and fifty. All that were numbered in the camp of Reuben were an hundred thousand and fifty, and one thousand and four hundred and fifty throughout their armies, and they shall set forth in the second rank. Then the tabernacle of the congregation shall set forward with the camp of the Levites in the midst of the camp. As they encamp, so shall they set forward, every man in his place by their standards. On the west side shall be the standard of the camp of Ephraim according to their armies, and the captain of the sons of Ephraim shall be Elishama the son of Amahud, and his host, and those that were numbered of them, were forty thousand and five hundred. And by him shall be the tribe of Manasseh, and the captain of the children of Manasseh shall be Gamaliel the son of Pedazah. And his host, and those that were numbered of them, were thirty and two thousand and two hundred. Then the tribe of Benjamin, and the captain of the sons of Benjamin shall be Abidan the son of Gideoni. And his host, and those that were numbered of them, were thirty and five thousand and four hundred. All that were numbered of the camp of Ephraim were an hundred thousand and eight thousand and an hundred throughout their armies, and they shall go forward in the third rank. The standard of the camp of Dan shall be on the north side by their armies, and the captain of the children of Dan shall be Ahazer the son of Amishaddai, and his host and those that were numbered of them were threescore and two thousand and seven hundred. And those that encamp by him shall be the tribe of Asher, and the captain of the children of Asher shall be Pagio the son of Akron, and his host, and those that were numbered of them, were forty and one thousand and five hundred. Then the tribe of Naphtali, and the captain of the children of Naphtali shall be Ahira the son of Enan, and his host, and those that were numbered of them were fifty and three thousand and four hundred. All they that were numbered in the camp of Dan were an hundred thousand and fifty and seven thousand and six hundred. They shall go hindmost with their standards. These are those which were numbered of the children of Israel by the house of their fathers. All those that were numbered of the camps throughout their hosts were six hundred thousand and three thousand and five hundred and fifty. But the Levites were not numbered among the children of Israel, as the Lord commanded Moses. And the children of Israel did according to all that the Lord commanded Moses. So they pitched by their standards, and so they set forward, every one after their families, according to the house of their fathers. You have just listened to the Bible reading, and we need to take whatever we have learned to the Lord in prayer. Will you all rise up, please? Talk to the Lord in prayer. You've seen a commandment, a warning, an example, an instruction to obey, a promise to claim. Pray for grace that you will do as you have learned in the word of God. In Jesus' name, we pray. We remain standing as we give our tithe and offering unto the Lord. Before we give a read from Proverbs chapter 3, from verse 9, honor the Lord with thy substance, and with the first fruit of all thine increase, so shall thy bands be filled with plenty, and the presses shall burst out with new wine. Whatever you have come with, 
before the Lord this evening. We want you to dip your hands into your pocket and bag, and raise up your tithes and offering as we pray before we offer them unto the Lord. Father, we want to appreciate your name. Thank you because of the much you have provided for us, out of which we have brought this little token unto you. We ask and pray that this will be acceptable before you in Jesus' name. As many that will have love to give, but they don't have, uh, they have none, we pray that you will open the windows of heaven so that when next we come together, they'll be opportunity to give unto you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for answer to prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Let's draw up our tithe and offering into the bag that being passed around by our leaders and our ushers. Ensure you are not passed by. Thank you.
Savior, make me free from the weakness that enfeebles me. Hold my failing hand, help me firm to stand. Draw me to a closer walk with me. We now bring you choir ministrations from regions, states, and nations across the world.
Ever felt like your prayers are bouncing off the ceiling, like they're lost in the vastness of the deep, unanswered and unheard? We all have. But what if I told you that your prayers have power? He has answered your prayer. Imagine a wave of hope washing over you. Imagine burdens lifted, diverse healings taking place, and dreams blossoming its unique reality this is the power of prevailing prayers your prayer my prayer our prayer will avail much in jesus name this is your moment this is your chance to experience the transformative power of prevailing prayers don't wait any longer. Join us at the GCK Crusade and let your faith take flight. At the February edition with Pastor Dr. W.F. Komiye live at the Deeper Life Bible Church headquarters, Rumor Dara Pot Harkat, Nigeria, from the 22nd to the 27th of February 2024. With the Minister's Conference on 23rd, 26th, and 27th February. And the Epic Mind Shift Impact Academy coming up on the 24th of February. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be healed. Let's join hands and lift our voices unto God together because in unity there is power. started this last Thursday and I'm believing that when you come to start with you must bring the people that have problems because if there are no problems there can be no solution that night will be a night of miracle a night of power a night of healing a night of deliverance for everyone in Jesus' name. That will be your day, your time, your night of supernatural wonders. In Romans chapter 7, verse 14, it says, For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. When uh, somebody sells himself, they are sold to sin, they are sold to Satan, they are sold to slavery. There are people that sell themselves to substance just take and take and take drop that thing you inject into your body becomes something you cannot break up it goes to your brain 
goes to your mind, twists your life, destroys your life, and you cannot deliver yourself now because you are sold. You are sold to the slavery of substance in your life. You wake up in the night, you're searching for drugs, and when they don't have the drugs, they steal. They go for other, they must get the drug somehow. They're sold. They can sell the property of their parents. They can sell anything they find so that they'll be able to buy the substance. They are sold to substance. Other people sell themselves to sensuality. The sin of the flesh, the fornication, the adultery. The works of the flesh, they sell themselves, and once they are sold, they become such a slave, you cannot get yourself out. You know, the people who walk by the flesh, who live by the flesh, adultery and fornication, if, uh, you know, they don't find it, adultery will find them, fornication will find them, and they cannot say no, because they are sold. Other people are sold. The secret society. You like staying in that dungeon, dungeon of guilt, dungeon of condemnation. I didn't want to do it. I've done it again. I didn't want to go there. I find myself again. Do you want to? Do you want to stay in that dungeon of helplessness? That's the things you do, the places you go, the dress you wear, the alcohol you drink, the marijuana you smoke, the evil that you do, it puts you in a dungeon. You were in slavery, and there's no power on earth that could set you free. And the Father said, I'll send my eternal Son the greatest person in heaven, his only begotten son, and say for him, go to the world and be born as a child. For your redemption, for your liberation, the life of the only begotten son of God. You are the one depriving yourself of the provision of Calvary that the Lord has brought to everyone. Why don't you, for this once in your life, come back to your senses like the prodigal son came back to his mind? Isaiah chapter 9, and I'm reading from verse 6. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and he says his name shall be called Wonderful. His name shall be called Counselor, and is the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. He said, I know, there's no way you can have peace. When you are sold to Satan, when you are sold in slavery, when you are sold to sin, when you are sold to sensuality, when you are sold to substance, when you are sold to secret society, then the Lord is going about, is looking for you. He says, where is that boy? Where is that girl? Where is that prodigal son? Where is that polluted daughter? Where is that man, the lost man? Where is that woman, the licentious woman? I've sent my only begotten son to save him. As you surrender yourself, to the way maker, the one that says, I am come for you. He came from heaven to deliver you. Tonight is your night. Are you ready? Why don't you rise up and say, Lord, here am I. I want it done in my heart. The word of God has been given. This is a night of total redemption and deliverance from all forms of bondages, and evil enslavement. For thus says the Lord, ye have sold yourself for naught, and ye shall be redeemed without money. Jesus Christ is the only one that can liberate, that can free everyone from all forms of evil habits. 
is the one that can redeem you without money. You cannot save yourself. Tonight is a night of total freedom. We are praying now that anyone who is under the enslavement of sin will want to pray. And if you are still under the enslavement of sin, pray that God will free you by the blood of Jesus Christ. Call upon the name of the Lord and let's join our hands and our hearts together to pray that as many that are captivated by the devil, they are under the enslavement of Satan tonight, they be free in Jesus' name. Let's call upon God and pray that God Almighty will set them at freedom. Are there some people too who are enslaved to substance? They smoke, they drink, alcohol and they take hard drugs and it intoxicate them and they have that habit and they are searching for it their flesh is crying for it at any time we want to pray that tonight they be free completely and totally call upon god and pray and let's join us together our hearts together to help them to pray and say oh lord as men are as to alcohol Slave to hard drugs, all other things they are smoking, marijuana. We want to pray and say, God, tonight you will free them. They will lose appetite for those things that have been enslaving them. Let's pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. There are people who are slave to sensuality, immorality. They are lesbians, homosexuals, fornication, adultery. We want to pray is synonymous to their name. We want to pray that tonight they will be free. Tonight they will be liberated. And if you know you are under the influence of this enslavement, of the wicked one, pray that God deliver me. And God Almighty will set you at freedom. Let's pray together. Ask the Lord. Let's join hands and pray as many in our midst that are listening to the world. They are still slave to immorality, adultery. The Lord God will set them at liberty by the blood of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit. They be free. In Jesus' name we pray. There are some that are in the secret call, in the secret society, they are in the dungeon of evil and the enemy has threatened them. And say, so if you come out, we will destroy you, you will die. But I want to assure you, if you are in that condition tonight, the servant of God have given the word of God. You will not die. Just come to Jesus. He will receive you. And he will break all those chains, all those yoke out of your life completely and totally in the name of Jesus. Slave to sin, you can be free. Slave to Satan, you can be free. Slave to substance, you can be free. Slave to sensuality, immorality, adultery, fornication, you can be free. Slave to secret society, you can be free. Jesus is the liberator. is the one that can free you. is the one that has been chosen by the Father God. is looking for you. is beckoning on you to come. If you can only come. You say, Pastor, how can I be free? How did you get into all these evil habits? You deliberately went into them. Now, deliberately take a conscious step and come back to the Lord. I say, Lord, I've come. And the Lord said, He that cometh to me, I will no wise cast out. Let's pray. Call upon God and coming back. And as you come, He will receive you in Jesus' name. We are going to pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you because of your word that has come to us. Those who have sold themselves deliberately unto sin, Satan, slavery, substance, and sensuality and secret color and all other form of evil satanic enslavement bad habit tonight i pray the blood of jesus will flow and break all those bondages in jesus name the blood of jesus will wash them clean from all those dirty evil habits in the name of jesus christ you are the yoke breaker anyone under the yoke of this evil O oh Lord, let the yoke be destroyed, because by the anointing the yoke shall be destroyed. 
I pray, oh Lord, destroy those yokes out of their life, all those bondages out of their life, and let them be free, oh God, in Jesus' name. You died for them, you suffered for them. They will not suffer again, they come to you. If they accept you, if they receive you, and as they come to you now, praying and calling upon you, repenting, Father, I pray you will accept them, and they'll be totally free from today, in the name of Jesus, if the Son of Man shall set you free, you shall be free indeed. Father, thank you for setting them free. Thank you for removing those evil satanic habits from their lives. We know you have answered our prayers now. In Jesus' name, I pray. And amen. And the headquarters church said, I welcome everyone to our Bible study tonight. It's always a joy when we come together and we learn together and the power of the word works in every life. It will work more in your life. It's working already. Say it's working already to work more in our lives in Jesus' name. I want to remind you once again, all these empty seats down here, down there, I want to fill them up every Monday. Monday Bible study is our Bible school. I mean Bible school for all the members. And we go from chapter to chapter, verse to verse, and book to book. And by the time you come a number of times, you'll be a preacher yourself. It may be better. Amen. You know, as I get older, I want to go through thoroughly what we have in the Bible so that as um, I don't mean I'm going now, not time yet. I said it's not time yet. But as things are going on, I'll be finding a brother there, sister there, and I might even uh, try and sit down here and say, today you will teach you will do it. Father, we thank you today and we bless your name for calling us into this solemn assembly to read your word, to learn your word, and to be impacted by your word. I'm asking, O oh Lord, that you touch every heart today and make us the man, the woman, the brother, the, the sister, the minister we ought to be in Jesus' name. And we pray that your word will not fall on the ground. It will fall in the fertile ground of our hearts in Jesus' name. Lift up your people. Give us more understanding that will go forth and do the work you have called us to do in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. God bless you. Your amen looks very good. You want to say another amen? amen? We're coming to James chapter 1, and we're reading from verse 13. James chapter 1, verse 13. Let no man say, when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man look at verse 14 in verse 14 but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed verse 15 it says then when lust has conceived it bringeth forth sin and sin when it is finished bringeth forth death Verse 16, it says, Be, uh, Do not err, my beloved brethren. Tonight, we're looking at uh, the study under this title, Believers, Vigilance, and Victory Over Temptation. Temptation? Temptation will come. Temptation is there. There's a devil in the world, and there are spirits in the world, and there are men and women in the world that would like to tempt the believer to sin in. Therefore, we need to understand how do we overcome? How do we triumph? How do we have the victory? The believer's vigilance 
and victory over temptation. There are three things we're looking at here. Number one, revelation of the source and uh, the violation of temptation. Temptation violates people, violates their right, violates their peace of mind, and violates their, their decision. They want to go this direction in the right direction. And here comes the tempter with his temptation to violate them. And we need to know the source of such violation number two the ruinousness that is when uh, when something ruins and destroys and scatters somebody's life the ruinousness of succumbing voluntarily to temptation number three resources for the saints victory over temptation saints victory over temptation young or old we're connected with the lord and we have the salvation of our soul and that connection is still there that conversion is still valid we are the saints of god we're going to overcome if you were defeated in the past the days of victory they have come for you they have come for me looks like you are not excited tonight the kind of amen you are giving is like amen yeah. let's look at number one number one revelation of the source and violation of temptation three things we're looking at here number one the regrettable statement on the temptation of the subjects the subjects are the citizens in the kingdom and they are the subject of the king of kings and the lord of laws and for anyone to say i'm being tempted of god that is a regrettable statement number two revealed source of temptation to sin when god tests us that's not temptation that's just testing to test to understand to to bring out our strength our value and to bring out our consecration he can test us even though the word the old english word uh, from king james version might say that god did tempt abraham really he tested abraham to know his consecration and to know his mind of following him but when it comes to tempting to sin in the work of the devil the revealed source of temptation to sin number three the root and the root that is the second root there is the pathway is the is the is the road that uh, from temptation to sinfulness let's look at number one number one the regrettable statement on the temptation of subjects we're looking at james chapter one reading from verse 13. james 1 verse 13 let no man say when he is tempted i am tempted of God that's the regrettable statement that anyone can say that God is tempting him or tempting her to sin he loves everyone how would you tempt how will you destroy the person you love he gave Jesus Christ for us that he might set us free from sin how will he at the same time tempt us to sin and he has said the soul that sinneth it shall die and he's not willing that anyone should die but that all should come to repentance i will i will the god of love and the god of life how will he then tempt us to evil it's a regrettable statement that anybody can make that god is tempting him that's why the bible says let no man no man here no man there no man in the past generation no man in the present generation no man even in the world God does not tempt them if he's going to judge them for their sin how will he at the same time tempt them to commit sin in the world in the church among the young among the old anyone anywhere it is not God that tempts us it says let no man say 
when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. We're looking at uh, Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3, we're looking at verse 11. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked as thou eating of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou should not eat? Look at verse 12. It said, The man, and the man said, The woman whom thou givest me to be with me she gave me of the tree and i did eat it's not god that brought the temptation and is and god did not create eve make her the wife of adam so that she can he can fall no i will make him and help meet for him the purpose of God, the intention of God is that the wife will help the man, keep the man, protect the man, and will sustain the man with all the grace and all the strength that she could have. But the serpent came, Satan came, and tempted Eve, and Eve succumbed, and Satan put it in the heart of Eve to also give to the husband. That is how the temptation how the thing came in isaiah chapter 63 reading from verse 17 it says O lord why hast thou made us to err from thy ways that the wrong statement of those people once again they said god you made us err you made us go astray you made us do evil you made us depart from your way how can god do that god has said stand ye in the ways and ask and know where is the good way the old way and walk ye in it the same god that calls us to walk in the right way how can he then lead us astray out of the way it's a misstatement a regrettable statement by anyone the subjects of the king of kings to say you made us err from thy ways and you hardened our heart from thy fear god doesn't harden anybody's heart he is the one that actually takes away the stony heart and he gives all the heart of flesh and the same god that calls us and he says i will cleanse you i will wash you from all your filthiness and i will take the stony heart out of your flesh and give you the heart of flesh that same god cannot contradict himself and make our heart hard towards him return for thy servant's sake and the tribes of thine inheritance and so we understand god does not tempt us if temptation comes it's coming from satan and if it ever comes to you you'll overcome in jesus name in job chapter 31 reading from verse 33 if i covered my transgressions as adam by hiding my iniquity in my bosom and job is telling us that actually what happened to adam is that he was covering up he was giving excuse and that excuse did not stand and job said i will not do that i will not accuse god that is the one tempting me look at number two here number two we're looking at the revealed source of temptation to sin we need to know who is the personality that actually tempts people to sin in in Luke chapter 4 reading from verse 2 Luke chapter 4 verse 2 being 40 days tempted of the devil you see that the father did not tempt the son God in heaven did not tempt Jesus his only begotten son the Holy Ghost did not tempt uh, the son of God Jesus Christ 
it was the devil because Christ came to this world to save he came to this world so that he will recover the kingdom from the devil and that's what God sent him for and he said I want to do your will lo I am here look I come to do your will the same God that wants him to do the will of the Heavenly Father cannot tempt him not to do it. It says in 40 days he was tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. Look at verse 3. In verse 3 it says, And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command mind this stone that it be made bread very clear is the devil that tempts whenever you have any temptation is the devil that brings the temptation and he has a goal he wants you to fall he wants you to compromise he wants you to sin so that as see as a means heaven and he knows it's not going to heaven and he knows it's a short time it will soon be in hell he says i don't want to be there alone he wants to gather all the sons and and the, and the daughters of men he wants to gather them with him i will not go with him first chronicles chapter 21 i'm reading from verse 1 first chronicles chapter 21 verse 1 and satan stood up against israel and provoked david to number israel again we're told it's satan it's the devil it's Lucifer, it's the adversary, it's the accuser of the brethren that does that. Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. Underline that word, provoke. When there is you know, something happening and uh, you know that thing rubs the wrong direction with you. And there is a uh, few men from within. And there is some um, anger from within and there's uprising from within and it's like you should rise up and go and do something wrong it may be something of the flesh it may be something like fighting it may be like confrontation whatever it is that something is rising up in you as it get up get up get up and go and confront them that's provocation please remember that provocation is of the devil and that provocation is of satan you will not obey satan i will not obey satan look at acts of the apostle chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 3 acts chapter 5 verse 3 peter said ananias why has satan filled thine heart to lie to the holy ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land when there is a tendency to tell a lie to deceive 